Tuesday's deadly mass shooting at STEM School in Colorado happened just seven miles from Columbine, where 13 people were killed 20 years ago. Since then, mass shootings have become all too common in the United States, with Colorado being particularly hard hit. Our next guest, Zachary Cartaya, survived the Columbine shooting. He's joined by Kaylin Bailey, who was just 13 years old when she survived the shooting at the Aurora Movie Theater. Her six-year-old cousin was killed in that attack. Uh, I have to say to both of you, I so appreciate you being here because I think what you have to say and your perspective is so valuable for the survivors of this spate, for this epidemic of shootings that keeps happening. I think you're necessary, and I think it's tragic that you're so necessary at this point. Zach, I, I want to start with you here. It's almost exactly 20 years ago that Columbine happened. Almost exactly, just seven miles this attack uh, at the STEM school was from Columbine. So what's your reaction 20 years later, or what was your reaction that a shooting, another school shooting was taking place just seven miles from where you survived? Well, hi, good morning, and thank you so much for having me. Um, my reaction is, is the same as it is every single time this happens. I'm just absolutely distraught and heartbroken that this keeps happening in, in our country, not only our country, but across our great state. Colorado should be known for so much more than, than what's happening here because it's such a great place to live. Um, in the initial aftermath after the shooting, I was very lost. I was in, I was in shock. But um, <clears throat> as this continues to happen, I find myself um, more and more frustrated. Columbine was, was really the first. And um, there were screams and cries of never again. And that was how it was supposed to happen. And that's how it was supposed to be. But here we are 20 years later. And this continues to happen. It happened mm -hmm. 13 years later in Aurora. It happened after that at Arapahoe High School in Colorado Springs. Mm -hmm. It happened just recently at the STEM school in Highlands Ranch. And then in addition to that, you have Parkland mm -hmm. and the Pulse nightclub shooting and just too many more to mention. It no, just yeah. keeps happening and it's frustrating to uh, almost a fault. Do you have any sense, Zach, of why Colorado? Yes, it, it does happen everywhere, but why there do seem to be so many instances in Colorado? You know, I struggle with that. I don't know why it keeps happening in our great state. Um, I think we as a society and the media as well has come a long way in working to not uh, glamorize or, or, or give notoriety to the shooters. But at the time that Columbine happened, yeah. our, our murders were you, their household names now. Sure. Everyone knows who they are, and you can't put the lid back on that mm -hmm. bottle. Right. And so I think the fact that it happened here with the notoriety around those two really pushed a narrative that allowed that, gave that, gave that oxygen and allowed that to man manifest and metastasize, unfortunately. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, you go back and their, their names were known. And, and it's so interesting because this week I couldn't tell you the names of the shooters at the shooting at the STEM school. I never learned them intentionally, didn't want to know them. And I don't think most Americans know their name. And I think that that's a good thing. Kayla. Again, uh, for you, it was 2012 at the Aurora Movie Theater. You were just 13 years old. You lost your six-year-old cousin uh, at that shooting. So, again, when you hear of a shooting like this in your state or in the same state, in Colorado, does it bring you back to that horrible moment? Oh, absolutely. Um, not even a shooting in Colorado, any shooting, any tragedy that happens in anywhere, any part of the world, not even just the United States. It, it affects me and I'm sure it affects everybody else as well. And it's just the thought and the process of the fact that it does keep happening mm -hmm. and we have the power mm -hmm. to control that and to stop it. And yet here we are, yet another, mm -hmm. another day has gone by, another shooting has gone by and it's so normalized that we almost mm -hmm. expect it, and it's not surprising yeah. when it happens anymore, and that's, that's the tragedy of it. We failed. There, there's just no question that we have failed to deal with this. But in one aspect, you both have succeeded. And again, it's sad to me that, that you're so necessary here, but it's to help survivors of these shootings. And I want to play you sound from a young man that Allison spoke to yesterday, Chris Elledge, who survived the shooting yesterday. This is what he told us. We're going to get through it as a community because you know, you don't stop your life just to, just because of one bad thing. You can't, you can't let that get in the way. You have to band together as a community. You have to stay strong, stem strong, stem strong. 
it broke my heart when I was seeing that because it seemed to me he was trying to be so strong. And I know it's not going to be that easy over the next few years. So for the rest of the time we have, I want you both to give advice to him and to the survivors there. Kayla, you first, what does Chris need to know? Well, first and foremost, you're never alone, no, no matter what, no matter if it's whether you have your parents or your best friends or a complete stranger that might have, might have or might have not been through what you've been through. Um, it's never, you never have to go about it alone. And that's the first thing that I, I would like to say to everybody and all the survivors out there that may be listening. There is always somebody that maybe not can't relate to you, but can definitely sit there and just listen to you. Um, the being strong, that is, that is a wonderful thing, but I don't want anyone to think that they have to be strong right away. It's okay to grieve. Mm -hmm. It's okay to hurt. It's okay to feel lost. It's okay mm -hmm. to not even know what you're feeling at all. Right. You know, it's okay to know that something's wrong, but mm -hmm. you can't quite pinpoint it. You know, you may just have days where right. you're just upset. You're just mad at the world and everything that everyone does is making you mad and upset. And it, it may just be that you mm -hmm. just have to sit down and get in tune with yourself, you know, grow within yourself. Um, and definitely reach out mm -hmm. to the people around you. Don't try to fight Ask. this alone because that, that's a dangerous game. Ask for help. Uh, Zach, I know you've made this your life to a certain extent. We're almost out of time, but what's your advice to the survivors? Well, I'd really like to echo all of Kayla's sentiments. And also, um, recovery is a marathon, not a race. It's going to take time and it's ongoing. There's a new normal in, in their lives that is Going, they're going to have to adapt to and, and change with, and don't be afraid to ask for help, and, and don't ever feel alone. Um, and, and finally, it gets better. There are going to be some times where it gets better, and you're going to relapse and recover and continue to relapse and recover, but it's going to get better, and there's light at the other end of the tunnel. Um, again, Zachary Cartaya, Kaylin Bailey, we're so glad that we have you. The survivors are lucky that they have you. It's tragic that we all need you. Um, thanks so much for being with us this morning, and thank you for the work you've both been doing. Thank you. Thank you for having me.